Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss a very important and very relevant clinical lesion that is bronchiectasis. So we are going to start with a case presentation and subsequently proceed with the etiopathogenesis, clinical features, treatment overview, morphological changes. So please stay hooked to the video till the end. So bronchiectasis case study. So here 20 year old male comes to his physician with a hackling cuff and a purulent sputum. His history is positive for genetic birth defect, that is Katagunner uh, syndrome. Katagunner syndrome is positive over here and in which the ciliary motion is either abnormal or absent. The patient also claims to have a constantly runny nose, a prior diagnosis of chronic bronchitis and numerous bouts of pneumonia. What is the most likely diagnosis? So remember the keywords, Katagunner syndrome, defective ciliary motion, and there are symptoms of runny nose, chronic bronchitis, and bouts of pneumonia. The diagnosis that was conferred is bronchiectasis. So we'll now discuss how we come to the conclusion of bronchiectasis based on this case presentation. Bronchiectasis is a permanent dilatation of bronchi and bronchioles. It is due to destruction of cartilage, muscle, and elastic tissue. So there is a permanent destruction of cartilage, muscle, and elastic tissue taking place. That gives rise to permanent dilatation. That is the important uh, wordings, permanent dilatation. Various causes could be chronic necrotizing in infections, it could be secondary to persisting infection or obstruction. Generally, it is not a primary disease. It is a secondary disorder. So the two process that is uh, responsible for pathogenesis of bronchiectasis are obstruction that predisposes to infection and inflammation. There is chronic persistent in infection and inflammation that weakens the wall, which allows for the significant dilatation of airways. The common etiopathogenesis that is often being asked, cystic fibrosis, one of the leading cause in US, various infections, tuberculosis is regarded as the most common cause worldwide and various necrotizing pneumonias like Staph aureus, Streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So you need to remember all these uh, key etiological factors, bronchial obstruction, bronchogenic carcinoma, a, a kind of a tumor wall obstructs the bronchi that leads to bronchial dilatation. Immotile cilia syndrome, also known as, known as Cartagena syndrome. Immotile ciliary syndrome may not have the classical manifestations of Cartagena syndrome, but more than half of the patients of immotile ciliary syndrome has the triad of Cartagena syndrome. Immotile ciliary syndrome and Cartagena syndrome, they have absent dyninam. Dyninam contains the ATPase that are responsible for the movement of cilia. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis is a condition in patients with bronchial asthma and cystic fibrosis, and it leads to bronchiectasis and fibrotic lung disease. It is regarded as a condition that results from hypersensitivity to fungus aspergillus fumigatus. So a kind of a fungus ball develops, and the fungus ball is of aspergillus, and this, on a hypersensitivity to that, there is inflammation and the inflammation leads to bronchial asthma and cystic fibrosis and there is a bronchiectasis and fibrotic lung disease subsequently developing subsequently to that and that is known as allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Bronchiectasis and cystic fibrosis, how it happens in cystic fibrosis? Let's uh, see that. So as you all know that in cystic fibrosis, there is an abnormal an ion channel transport, generally there is a chloride and ion channel transport is defective. That uh, produces thick viscous mucus in the larger airways. There is airway obstruction and dilatation. Superimposed infections that are often seen are staph, pseudomonas, and the superimposed infection lead to the bronchiectasis. Now here in this arrow, uh, these uh, arrowheads are demonstrating the absence of Dyninum. So the absence of dyninum is response uh, leads to immotile uh, cilia, and that leads to you know, improper cleaning of improper clearing of the bacteria, and that leads to 
superimposed infection and subsequently bronchiectasis. So the gross findings in bronchiectasis are likely to be dilated bronchi and bronchi bronchioles that is filled with pus. Dilated airways extending to the lung periphery are seen. Usually dilated lung airways do not extend beyond uh, two to three centimeters from the pleural surface here. But in case of bronchiectasis, they are seen extending to the lung periphery. Dilatations are tube-like or secular. And histological findings com comprises of intense acute and chronic inflammatory exudates that are seen restricted within the walls of bronchi and bronchioles. Associated desquamative lining is seen. Desquamation of the lining epithelium that may be partially or completely peeled off. The lining may be peeled off. And there are areas of ulceration with, which is lined by acute inflammatory exudate may be seen. And here you can see a lung uh, which is affected with cystic fibrosis with the dilated airways and this airways are being filled with pus-like material owing to the super imposed infection like pseudomonas and staph aureus that is very common in the setting of cystic fibrosis. And here you can see the prominent, permanently dilated airways that are indicative of bronchiectasis. Clinical findings, clinical findings say that there is a cough. Always there is a cough productive of copious sputum. That is the characteristic feature. Hemoptosis is also sometimes there, and that could be massive. Digital clubbing and uh, signs of hypoxemia are seen. Hypercapnia due to decreased ventilation, hypoxemia and hypercapnia are seen. Pulmonary hypertension can develop and ultimately it may land up to right heart failure, that is core pulmonary. Core pulmonary brain abscess and amyloidosis are the less frequent complications of bronchiectasis. These are less frequent these days because of aggressive antibiotics that is uh, useful in combating infection and that leads to avoiding of all these uh, all these complications which were quite uh, prevalent earlier days. Primary ciliary dyskinesia patients, many of them, they have the characteristic triad that is known as Cartagena syndrome. Now, what is Cartagena syndrome? That is very commonly being asked. Situs inverses. That is uh, because the ciliary movement is, ne is needed for the rotation of the viscera. So abnormal ciliary movement leads to abnormal rotation of the viscera. So there is a situs inverses. Abnormal Visra may be located in the abnormal side left or right that is called as situs inverses. There is bronchiectasis and there is sinusitis. Males with uh, primary ciliary dyskinesia may have a uh, sperm dysmotility leading to infertility. X-ray finding shows bronchial marking extending to the lung periphery that is the characteristic radiological feature of bronchiectasis. So the treatment, what you are going to give? Treatment uh, that is being given as antibiotics, treatment of underlying condition that is very important, and the physical therapy may help uh, drainage of uh, fluid and some kind of uh, secretory material, and that may give a temporary relief from bronchiectasis. So that's all for this particular presentation. And what we learned in bronchiectasis, let's have a quick recap of that. Bronchiectasis commonly results due to superimposed infections emanating from underlying conditions like cystic fibrosis, or there may be tuberculosis, aspergillosis, which, which predispose to obstruction, inflammation, and that causes bronchiectasis. That is, there is a destruction of the underlying airways and various connective tissue that leads to permanent dilatation of airways that is called as bronchiectasis. And bronchiectasis have permanent dilated airways that reach to the periphery of the lung and bronchiectasis are commonly treated with antibiotics, physical therapy, and some treatment of underlying condition is uh, usually supportive in case of bronchiectasis. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you liked the video. Please don't forget to comment and uh, give your valuable feedback. See you all in the next video very soon. Bye-bye for now.